Bruno, I was given, little more I gave myself, and with some prodding, I have finally decided to give this undeserving and spiritually diseased world the generous gift of my memoirs. I give this gift with the aim and hope that they will enlighten, enchant, forewarn, instruct, and perchance even entertain. However, I find the physical tedium of actually writing unendurable. <laughs> I never bothered learning to type any more adroitly than by use of the embarrassingly primitive hunt and peck method. And as for a pen and paper, my hands, as you can see, are awkwardly shaped and tire easily of etching out so many small, fastidious markings. That is why I have decided to deliver my memoirs by dictation. <laughs> and because voice recorders detest me for the usual reasons, I must have an amanuensis. Right now, it is 11.15 in the morning on a drably nondescript day in September. I am lying partially supine and extremely comfortably on a couch, my shoes off, my socks on, a glass of iced tea tinkling peacefully in my hand, and there is a soft-spoken young woman named Gwyn Gupta sitting in this very room with me, recording my words in a yellow notepad with a pencil and a laser-like sense of concentration. Gwyn, my amanuensis, is a college student employed as an intern at the research center where I am housed. It is she who acts as midwife to these words which my mind conceives and my lungs and tongue bear forth, delivering them from my mouth and by the sheer process of documentation imbuing them forever with the solemnity and permanence of literature. <laughs> now to begin. Where should I begin, Gwen? No, don't speak. <laughs> I'll begin with the first time I met Lydia, because Lydia is the reason why I am here. Now skipping to the second chapter. The first time I met Lydia, I was so young and uncontaminated by the world that I didn't even know I was participating in a scientific experiment.